I want to show you guys something right here. So this is monitoring installed on my house and then two other people's houses. And I'm going to show that I tackled the AC problem in my house. I have the largest house out of the three here and I have the most people living in my home. Now when you see these numbers to the right that are updating, those are kilowatt hours. So my house is using 0.634 kilowatt hours. Anything that's right here is what we're paying for. So the middle house is paying for 5,000 watts per hour or 5.066 kilowatt hours and the bottom one is using 7,000 at the moment, okay? Now if you go to full day, you'll see the numbers change, okay? Middle house using the most, I'm using the second most total, third house, which is the smallest house, using the least. But during the day, it is quite different on what everyone's paying for, okay? When you look into these customers right here, it's the AC you'll see that is doing this. And you can see this thing's running near 5,000 watts. Almost, I mean, it is running nonstop at the moment. I mean, it is just nonstop, almost 5,000 watts. This home is not efficiently handling this. We have this heat dome and high heat index, right? And it's the same thing with the bottom, except he also has a heat, a water heater thing that's going on. So this water heater, or furnish or something is coming on pretty crazily but then the AC is also just really 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 hammering him now when I say that mine doesn't have the AC it's not that I don't have my AC turned on okay when I left it was 73 degrees in my house all right what's going on is I have mini splits so my master bedroom it hits the temperature and then it cycles down to 875 watts. Now, the game room, which is in Caden's room, actually, is using 1500 watts right now. A few seconds ago, it was all the way down to 300 watts. So it only kicks on when it needs to get the room to temperature again, and then it will shut back down. As you can see, Lexi's at the moment is 260 watts, which is the kid's room. The living room down there, it's using 1,164. It was at 800 not too long ago. And that's kind of the point of this. They cycle up and then cycle down. They hit the temperatures and different people can have different temperatures in different areas that they want. So not everyone has to have the same temperatures. And the reason this is happening is because, you know, it's actually 102 or something like that in my car. The heat index has been very, very high and you're fighting it in the daytime and the nighttime. And so my house doesn't really have that much. It's only the office that's, you know, charging some computers and stuff like that. Um, I, I don't have that particular room on solar, but almost everything else is not being used and the AC is covered. So I don't have to worry about that. So solving your home as a complete problem, looking at your efficiencies, how your AC is handling the heat. If you have thermal leaks, or anything like that my house is very insulated and I went through and added additional insulation by using thermal imaging to find these thermal leaks that were coming out of my attic coming through doors uh, even my attic I mean my garage doors whenever I insulated it properly I can cool my house off easier in zone controlled easier to manage methods with my solar panel system right and then I can circulate that cool air with the fans in the house and that's why even though I have the largest house I have the lowest utility cost so I thought that was cool just wanted to show you all how that worked with real side-by-side -side monitoring like that